I'm sure I'm not alone in not wanting to stand in any more spilt milk. Um, let's see. Oh, wrong glass, sorry. In 1935, at the age of 18, Jane Auer was living in the Hyde Park Hotel in New York with her mother, Claire Stager Auer. Sidney Auer, Jane's father, had died in 1930. From 1932 until 1934, Jane had been in a sanitarium in Switzerland for treatment of tuberculosis in the bone of her knee. On her return to New York, she was operated on and her right leg permanently stiffened. In New York, she began a novel in French, but spent most of her time exploring Greenwich Village. This first letter is to George McMillan, a young man who was working in a village club as doorman, bouncer, and cashier. The incident that precipitated the letter was Jane's running away from home after a fight with her mother. She had been found in Greenwich Village by her Aunt Constance and brought back to her mother's apartment. Dear George, here's what happened when I arrived home. Connie was lying around taking me to her place, but I didn't raise a kick. I knew I'd be with mother sooner or later anyway. Mother was potting around the kitchen, anti-climax, and Aunt Flo was wrapped up in Uncle Carl's bathrobe. Whenever there's grief around, women always accumulate blankets, men's overcoats, hot water bottles, woolen scarves. They whisked me into the bedroom while mother finished gnawing at her roast beef bone. <laughs> Connie said, get undressed, dear. She was at the burping stage and felt very ill, as she had told us once or twice in the car. I remained dressed. They were four against one anyway. Then mother came in in the awful black kimono she had on the night you were here. She said, what's this? I took an arrogant stand. I had a, who are these people, look on my face. And I must get back down to the party. Then Connie started in. Now, Claire, you know I don't feel well, and I've been looking for Jane for four hours, and I was cold, and mother. Well, what has Jane to say for herself? Jane, nothing. I don't know why I'm here. Connie. Now, Jane, you know that's not true. You wanted to come back. She told me she couldn't hurt you, Claire. Hysterics on my part here. I don't know quite what I said. Sorry. But I know I almost killed the poor woman and started cursing myself because I couldn't hurt her. Then she kissed me, and they all sat down and said what a wonderful girl I was and what a fine young man you were, and that if I still wanted to marry you 25 years from now, I could. <laughs> that mother wouldn't think of standing in the way of my happiness, and that I was a grand, normal girl, and that this lesbian business was just an adolescent phase, adolescence being from seven to 33 in our family. <laughs> <laughs> and that if only I didn't have such an analytic mind, I certainly would throw it off. And if I really were a lesbian, they'd get up a fund for me and send me down to the village in my own private bus. <laughs> I suggested they might organize picnics for, for us girls every two weeks. But I, really wasn't one, so, but I really wasn't one, so they couldn't let me go to my ruin. Aunt Flo suggested 130 more men to straighten me out. Aunt Connie, 135. The same remedy seems to go for you and the leses, like three in one oil, or bleeding in the Middle Ages. In two weeks, I shall leave for college, Rollins, down south, Florida. They have beautiful low white buildings. We have the best equipped dorms in the USA, says Prez Holt, and we hope to suck enough of the rich students' blood so as to be able to install a radio in every room, which will look very well in our catalog. It is a modern college, and you can specialize in anything you please, conferences they have instead of lectures. I have been writing this letter for three days. Mother always comes in when I get started. George, pardon the tone of this, but I'm trying to counterbalance all the emotion and drama that's been hanging between us so that we could hardly see each other. You may come to see me and tell Lupe anything you like. She hasn't called me since the night you were here. Love to you. 1935, New York City.